In creative coding and animation, we can implement many different kinds of interactions. Instead of pushing the particles around, we can make them inflate like bubbles, for example. This is a bonus experimental section of Particle Systems Masterclass. I structured the series in a way where we build the basic shared code base once, and from there we take it in many different directions, always starting from the same point. For that reason, you can build the base code with me, or you can download it in the resources section below and then you can skip around the playlist and do the projects in any order or only do the projects you like. Have fun! I remove the black background. I remove the white stroke style to make the constellation lines visible against it. Inside draw method on particle class I stroke the particle circles to give them black outlines. Nice! Let's try a different color palette. Gradient will be from pink to red, to magenta, for example. When I resize the browser window, gradient resets, so I have to change const to let here. I copy this code without the let keyword. I paste it down here inside resize. I make sure I'm reassigning to the existing gradient variable. I don't want to redeclare it, so there will be no let or const here. Now, when I resize, the gradient adjusts and spreads across the new updated width and height of canvas. Perfect. Even better would be to define a gradient variable as this dot property on the main effect class to keep the classes self-contained. For now, this is fine. It will work well like this. I want to turn the particles into bubbles, so let's make them larger. Maybe a random value between 8 and 16 pixels radius. I want them to move slower, so maybe a random speed between minus 0.1 and plus 0.1 pixels per animation frame. When they move slower like this, it will allow us to kinda draw shapes by inflating them. Let me show you what I mean. Before we do that, I want each bubble to have a reflection patch. Bubbles are supposed to be shiny. So this is the body of the bubble, and on top of it we draw another circle as the reflection. I give it a white fill style. The reflection needs to be smaller, but relative to the radius of each particle, because we will be making them grow and shrink soon. When I set fill style here, it changes the state of the entire canvas, so everything drawn on canvas now has white fill style. I need to set fill style here for the body of the bubble. I will use my gradient variable here again. Reflection needs to be bigger. I move it to the left by a value relative to their randomized radius. I move it up vertically, again by a relative value. Normally I would pre-calculate these values for performance, but the core of this effect will be inflating these bubbles, so all the values here will be updating often and they need to stay dynamic. I can remove push forces from particle position calculation here and here. I can also remove these class properties, we don't need them here. I can also delete force and all this code inside the if statement. Instead of pushing particles away from the mouse, if the distance between mouse and the particle is less than mouse radius value, if particle is within mouse interaction radius area, we will increase radius of that particle by 2 pixels per animation frame. Now I have to be careful, I don't have any size limits in place, so particles will grow as long as I'm holding down the mouse button. If I just quickly click and release somewhere over canvas, we get this behavior. I need to keep track of minimum and maximum radius of each particle. That value will be relative to each particle's randomized radius value, but it can be pre-calculated and we always want to do that for performance reasons. Min radius will just keep the value of the original radius of the particle. We have to save it as a separate property, because this dot radius value on line 17 will keep changing as we interact with the effect. Max radius will be relative to the base radius as well, Maybe radius times 2, times 5. I only want the radius of the particle to increase if mouse is pressed, if distance between mouse and the particle is less than mouse radius, and only when the current radius of the particle is less than max radius. 
Only then we will increase radius of the particle by 2 pixels per animation frame. I also want particles to shrink back to their original size when they are outside mouse interaction area, so I go all the way outside this if statement, make sure you have one, two closing brackets in between, and then we write if this dot radius, radius of the particle, is more than minimum radius of the particle, keep decreasing radius by 0.1 pixels per animation frame. I test it. I click and I drag the mouse over canvas. Particles inflate, I release the mouse button and they start shrinking. Perfect. Maybe a smaller mouse interaction radius would be better. How about 60 pixels? Yes, I like this. It's your choice, but for this effect I will completely disable lines connecting the particles, since the particles are covering these lines up, in most cases anyway. It will improve performance of the effect as well, so... I could actually instead add more bubbles to the effect. Be careful with these values. Number of particles will have a big influence on performance, so you can experiment and see what value works well for you. Because particles move relatively slow, I can draw very simple shapes now by inflating bubbles like this. I think this is really cool. <laughs> you could also make the bubbles or their reflection patches semi-transparent either by using Canva's global alpha property to set opacity or by setting fill style to RGBA color declaration where we include alpha as the last argument. You could for example also make the particles invisible and very small and they only appear when we inflate them, creating an interesting mouse trail effect. Also the motion can be automated. You could for example have automated circular motion that inflates particles without the need to interact with the mouse. If you don't know what I mean or how to implement automated motion like that, keep watching the series. I will apply it to a completely different effect, but it can be easily copied and pasted and used here. It's actually much easier than you might think. If you want more creative coding experiments, I'll see you in the next one.